come back to another video. Um, so YouTube uh, last night recommended me a video. Uh, hello, yes, I know you like to use this. A uh, video rec that was recommended to me. Um, you know, is there any point going back to Generation One of Pokemon? And uh, um, I just like. Didn't even watch, I just missed it in my hands, like, no, not really. There's not really much of a reason to go back to Gen 1, in my, at least, for my opinion. You don't know. She does this when I'm on the phone. You're pissed. You're pissed. You're pissed. You're pissed. You're pissed. No, don't, not on my sleep. You're gonna, you want to go to the you There you go. Um, so, and then when I was in bed, I had the idea, I was like, what if I made a video where, you know, I came up with at least one reason why you would want to go back to every generation uh, today. And uh, um, uh, I'm mainly going to be focusing on the core games, so um, not really the spin-offs. Um, and the only time I'll be talking about the spin-offs is if they were, you know, vet linked to the main game, core games very tightly, um, uh, so I'll, um, I'll explain, you know, why, um, I, you know, mention them when I did, if I, and why, and any that I thought would be worth mentioning, why I didn't mention them. Um, so Generation 1, uh, it can actually be fun to abuse glitches and break the game, and yes, I do have this all noted down on my phone. Uh, abuse glitches and break games and it, uh, use the broken mechanics such as the broken special stat, uh, badge boost glitch, uh, lead seed and toxic stacking, uh, rap and uh, um, fire spin just being broken, you know, and just psychic types in general. It is fun to just like abuse the um, broken game mechanics and just bugs and everything. Um, and um, and uh, the the bugs can actually make some of the more unfun parts of the games more bearable. Like um, in my how easy was red, blue, green, and yellow um, at to the near the end, I used um, a glitch to walk through uh, Victory Road and skip the entirety of Victory Road because Victory Road is just a long, boring slog. That you the only reason why you ever do it is if you wanted to get. Moltres uh, before the Elite Four, um, so it to kind of be fun to abuse the broken game mechanics. And Stadium One is still a lot of fun to go back to. It has the mini games, uh, the three D models still aren't awful. Nowadays, yes, Lou. Um, the three D models aren't awful. Um, Nowadays, and um, unlike the um, 3D games after Gen 6, um, all of the mo all of the Pokemon have their own like idle animations, um, and the, the um, getting hit animations and attacking animations. Where in Gen 6, all the uh, getting hit animations look like they're having an orgasm. It's like, uh, uh, like seriously, look at like the Geodude getting hit by Razor Leaf in the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Um, trailer and tell me that Geodude is not having an orgasm. Yes, thank you for the kissy kisses. You're very nice. Um, but yeah, uh, that's why I got down for Gen 1. Uh, Gen 2 is not as broken as Generation 1 with a more refined art style because some of the um sprites in Gen 1 were. A bit rushed, and you could definitely tell it. And in Gen Two, they basically just refined everything to look a lot better because they had more time. Um, you know, yeah. Um. Uh, it's so it's not as broken as Gen One, and it has a more refined art style, uh, and it that is unique to uh, Generation Two. Um. And it's still a lot of fun, and uh, Pokemon the Stadium 2 is still a lot of fun with its own mini-games. Um, and uh, the reason here why I'm mentioning Stadium 1 and 2 is because they really did push uh, the compatibility with 
um, red, blue, green, and yellow because um, they had the um, Game Boy Tower. They, well, both of them came packed with the um, uh, the the transfer pack. Um, both of them had the Game Boy Tower, and the, the both of them uh, uh, basically uh, in round two basically required you to use a team uh, that you built in the uh, main games, otherwise they'd be nearly impossible. So, um, yeah, did you knock something off? Uh, so yeah, um, that's why I'm mentioning Stadium 1 and 2, because they're just so heavily linked to the main games of their generation. Gen 3 has some of the coolest and most unique Pokemon designs in the franchise. Um, and yeah, it really does like Rayquaza, um, Salamence, uh, Kyogre, Groundon, um, Flygon, off the top of my head, are just some of the cooler Pokemon in Generation 3. And Swablu is fucking adorable. Um, and it acts like a little, and it likes to sit on people's heads and it acts like a hat. And that is even more adorable. And I will fight anybody who says otherwise. Yes, no, that's him. Don't you? Anyway. Um, but I'm not going to mention Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness here because they didn't even come. You didn't even. Like when you bought XD Gale of Darkness for Come on Coliseum, they didn't come with the GameCube but to Game Boy Advance transfer cable. And you don't really need to transfer Pokemon into. Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness um, to really beat it, like at all. Um, like even the more difficult battle uh, mount battles can be beaten uh, with your in-game team, but it, it is a lot more difficult. Mm, play with that. Play with that. Um, so that's why I'm not really mentioning it, mentioning them as a pro, you know as a reason to go back to Gen Three right now. But uh, taking in in the spin-off games, yes, I would de uh, definitely recommend going back to play at least one of those two. Mind you, XD Gale of Darkness is very expensive and will cost you upwards of like two hundred quid. So yeah, a tad bit expensive. Um, I'm glad I got mine when I did when it was a lot cheaper. Hello, yes. Very nice. It's just calm. I don't want you to give me attention. Yeah. Anyway. On to my favourite generation. Generation 4. It is the most challenging generation. Which um, I have beaten uh, at least one of the games in each generation. I've beaten... Uh, red and blue multiple times, and yellow like a couple of times. Uh, I've beaten um, uh, silver a couple of times. I've beaten um, emerald once, um, and gen four countless times. Uh, gen five, I've beaten black and white at least once, and uh, dead black and white two a few times. Uh, I've beaten gen six a handful of times. I've beaten gen seven a couple of times. Uh, and I've beaten Gen 8 a uh, couple times as well. Um, and I would definitely say that Gen 4 is the most difficult. Gen 3 is the second most difficult uh, in the main games. Um, and it, uh, uh, it has some of the coolest and most out there designs of the entire franchise. Like, None of them are as out there as um, Garchomp, which is like Garchomp, which is a a land shark, or um, Magnezone, which is a bleeding new weapon. So it does have some. Of the, it does have some of the cooler and most out there designs of the entire Pokemon franchise, um, like Dialga. Um, the Giratina, like Giratina is fucking awesome. Oh, no, stop it. I know you want to play them. What is um, So, yeah, the, it just has some of the cool, uh, coolest Pokemon in the entire franchise. 
Um, and it introduced a bunch of cool evolutions to beloved Pokemon and Licky Tongue. Like, honestly, I love all of the Gen 4 evolutions to previous generation Pokemon. Like, Magnezone, one of my favourite Pokemon. Um, Weavile, one of the coolest Pokemon. Like, I'm not an Edgelord. Like, um, I, I love, like, Snubble and Granbull because they're, they're cool, but I am not really an Edgelord. Uh, um, but I really do like Weavile. Weavile is cool. Um, also, still really good in OU2 to this day. Um, which is impressive for any Pokemon to be uh, good, like, four generations later. Um, like, most Gen 1 Pokemon, by the time of Gen 4, were, were probably not being seen in OU. Um, but anyway, um... The only one I don't particularly like is Licky Licky, or Licky Tongue, whichever one. I keep getting the names mixed up, but I think it's Licky Licky. It's Licky Licky, that's the evolution, and Licky Tongue is the Gen 1 Pokemon. Licky Licky is the only Gen 4 evolution to a prior existing Pokemon that I don't really like as much. Like, I don't hate it, but I'm probably never going to use it in a proper team. Uh, also, I love Mag Magmortar and the Um... Oh, Electabuyer. I, I, I like them. Um, on to my least favourite, gen le least liked generation, Generation 5. Generation 5 has a ton of new Pokemon, and even if you don't like most of them, like me, um, you will still have a lot to work with. Um, so, like, basically... My, what I'm going for here is like, even if you don't like a lot of Gen 5 Pokemon, you know, you're still going to have like, a, because there's just so many of them, you're still going to have a, a enough Gen 5 Pokemon to create a uh, handful of teams with like, for now, you know, now give a good uh, few rounds in black and white. Um, and, that, you know, um, I quite often found that um, uh, when I was watching Chugga Conroy's playthrough of it, um, if there wasn't a route with any Pokemon I liked, um, the next route would have would have a Pokemon I liked. Like, I think the route before the cave where you get Joltik, I don't think there was any Pokemon on there that I really liked, but I do like Joltik and Galvantula. Um, that, that's just one that I can remember off the top of my head, so, you know, there's that. There's, you know, enough Pokemon even for someone who doesn't like Gen 5 in general to make it couple teams out of in Gen 5 uh, in black and white and um, in black 2 and white 2 they added a ton of previous generation Pokemon obtainable before post game um, and yeah that's just that just makes it so that even if you don't like a lot of Gen 5 Pokemon you, there's still a bunch more previous generation Pokemon uh, that they added in that you could also use and uh, I think that really helps Black and White 2 to be good games. Like, I don't like Black and White really at all, but Black Black 2 and White 2 I really do like. Um, on to Gen 6. Gen 6 had Mega Evolutions and Primals, which are cool. Um, you know, they're just cool and um, not too intrusive. Like, if you don't want to use uh, the Mega Blast, the Mega sta Gen 1 stat or Mega... Um, Lucaria that you get gifted in X and Y. You don't have to use them. You don't have to use Mega Blaziken that you get gifted in or as. Um, you don't have to use Primal Kyogre or Primal Groudon if you don't want to. So they are avoidable. But if you like them, then um, you know you can use them. My only real complaint with them is that um, you could just send your Mega in, Mega Evolve, and just blow through everything. Um, I know you sort of had uh, mostly the same problem with Z moves as well. Um, which it, which um, I do actually quite like um, Gigantamax and the de, uh, and the de, um, it's Gigantamax and the Dynamax, which I do, which I do like because you can't Dynamax or Gigantamax in a normal battle for, so you know you can just uh, Dynamax or Gigantamax your Pokemon and then just blow through an inter the NPC's entire team. Um, Uh, and it is the most laid-back and chilled generation 
and that can sometimes pose a challenge if if you turn the ex exp share off like um me and my friend max did a um race in x and y where we weren't allowed exp share we built our own team so we were just racing through X x and y to see who could beat uh, the game first i won by the way by a very good bit actually um um so yeah um uh, and going through that we we noticed there were times that we would actually fall behind levels and we had to grind so uh off the top of my head i can remember that we had to grind for um the battle for light against Lysander, the final battle against Lysander, we had to grind for that, which I didn't expect. Uh, and I can remember we had to grind for um, the Elite Four. Um, and I, there was probably a couple more times that we had to grind. Just got a ball. Um, but they are, I will admit, they are probably two of the easiest and uh, most laid back Pokemon games, which, you know. Depending on you how it's it's more of a pro or cons like um do you prefer a more easy laid back game or do you prefer to be challenged if you and if you do prefer to be challenged definitely go back to generations three and four um because they do definitely have some of the more difficult they are definitely more the more difficult games uh oh I need to go sort that out quickly and then I'll be right back. So, um, where, where was I? Uh, there's my power. Oh, I'll just sort that out for a minute. Stop, stop. Uh, yeah, I was just finishing off Gen 6, just saying that, yeah, they're just very easy. And that, if you want a challenge, go to Gen 3 and 4. Um, because on gen, in Gen 3 and 4, I legitimately had to grind for the Elite Four, then I had to grind for Cynthia. Um, so yeah. Um, those two games, uh, Generations, Gen 3 and 4, definitely the hardest out of them, at least from my experience. Anyway, on to Gen 7. Uh, Gen 7 has a large amount of uh, obtainable uh, Pokemon pre-post game and a couple of totem Pokemon that can be challenging. Now, here's the thing with Gen 7. I really struggled with Gen 7, like even Gen 5, my least light generation. I can see why people would want to go back to it and replay it. Um, well, I can't really see why anybody would want to go back and replay Gen 7. Um, don't bite the phone, Luna. Um, because it doesn't really... It doesn't really work. Really. Like, they're still not my least favourite generation. Like, my least favourite generation is still Gen 5 because it has more flaws than Generation 7. But Generation 7 just doesn't really succeed in what it tries to do but it doesn't really just like gen 5 but unlike gen 5 it doesn't crash and burn it just goes out with a whimper more like um and uh, basically this story right so the story it feels like they wanted a better more involved story than previous generations a bit what, more like what gen 5 did but um the difference between gen 7 and gen 5 is that um gen 5's story was unintrusive like you didn't really have the story pop up too much like e even me who don't doesn't like the story of gen 5 at all i can play because it's just like it's not super intrusive like i like um black and white too i just don't like black and white and um you know the story is just not super intrusive it comes up every now and then again but it just like pops up for a couple of minutes and then goes away and then you probably won't see it for a while like um until like 
the climax of the uh, game, which is just like not even that long, re really, um, and not really that plot heavy. So it's just, and it does have some cool cutscenes where Gen Seven. It this is literally the entire bit of A for Foundation is just like plot that drags you away from the main story and holds you hostage. That and it's just like the plot. You're just playing the game, and then all of, and then like every every other like five minutes, like after, almost after every totem Pokemon, the plot will hold you hostage for a good few minutes, and it is dull, boring, and monotonous. Like honestly, I would replay Black and White. Like ten times over before replaying Sun and Moon once, and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon does not help at all. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is Sun and Moon with Asia Foundation popping their heads, which is like, "Hey, we exist." Bye. Every now and again, until like the climax of it, where Ultra and Eclosma comes in, and it's quite difficult. To, but um, I believe there's actually. A Entire type that can, but it just can't hit at all. But I can't remember where it is. I'd have to look up Ultra Necrozma's um, boss fight moves and just like, oh yeah, it can't attack these this type of Pokemon. But this was like the plot is just no. You see, like seriously, um, I've only played Ultra Sun one. Once since it released, and even then, the plot was so dull, boring, monotonous, and drug out, um, drag out, not, you know, drag out that, um, I honestly couldn't make it to the post game. It had killed my enthusiasm for playing the game. Period. I was just like. Nah, I, I I can't I can't do the rainbow rockets. I'm I'm putting this down. Um, I'm gonna go do something else. That's how. What? Well, that's just how bad the plot is of Gen Seven for me. It just drained my enthusiasm for the game. Um, and uh, I just like, I'm I'm just gonna. Go do something else. I, even when I did eventually go back to Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and or Ultra Sun, I didn't even do Ultra Moon. Um, I don't think. Um, when I went back to Ultra Sun after uh, taking a break, I didn't even do the Rainbow Rocket Show because it's like, because I just couldn't make myself uh, do it. I just couldn't force myself to do it because it's like, with what with the main story of the main game, it's like I just had no enthusiasm for even looking at the post game. Um, and it's not like there's anything like majorly wrong with the plot of the games, like, like, like there is with Gen Five. Like the plot in Gen Five is just whittled with plot holes, where the plot of Gen Seven is mostly um, stable. It's just like uninteresting. Like, um, at least I can get passionate about the plot of Gen Five. It's like. Um, just like um, how stupid all the characters are, and that uh, um, just like how Ed, how and just just like there's just like so many things. Like I don't I don't want to go into it really because we'll be here for way too long. And I probably this will probably be like my third rant about Gen Five plot uh, on this channel maybe, but at least I can get passionate about that. And with Gen Seven, it's like. I've got nothing to work with. Um, on to Gen 8. Also, um, difficulty. There are a couple of totem Pokemon that are more difficult than others, which creates a weird difficulty because it's like people who like more relaxed, laid back games probably won't like the, um, to the more difficult totem Pokemon. But the people who like more difficult games won't like the vast majority of the game because it is for the most part quite easy um so it's just like 
who do you suggest this to? Do you suggest this to the Pokemon people who like the more laid back and relaxed Pokemon games like uh, Gen 6? Or do you suggest it to the people who like the more challenging Pokemon games like Gen 3 and 4? Um, but either way, I wouldn't suggest it to anybody to be honest. Um, Gen 8. Gen 8 has a ton of pre-post-game obtainable Pokemon, including Legendary Pokemon, which um, is a first and is definitely one of the biggest pros of the game, in my opinion, because it means that you just can have a ton of like different teams that you go through the game with. Uh, even like, if you want to do uh, multiple monotype run you could probably create like a good... Uh, few handfuls of Pokemon uh, that could do that like um, if I just go to Pokemon Showdown right now and uh, I think there should be a uh, hmm, no, there's a Sword and Shield doubles National Dex nah. so let me just go to Sword and Shield OU I just like put in a type. What's the least common type? I think the least common type would be ghost or dragon. I'm playing ghost. So in the sword and shield, there fully out of the fully evolved ghost type Pokemon, there's Dragapult, Lucephalon, Gengar, Aegislash, Chandelure, uh, Mawakalolan, Mimikyu, Poltergeist, Decidueye. Uh, which I don't think you can get without like transferring. Uh, Dethermise, Golurk, Pylosand, uh, Cofagrigus, Cursula, Driftblim, Dusknoir, Frostlass, Gorgeist, Jellicent, Rotom, uh, Runagrigus, which I think you can, I think you can only get Cofagrigus by transferring from home. So. Uh, Sableye, Sheninja, um, Silvalli Ghost, which is post game. Uh, Spiritomb, Trevenant, uh, and then all the others are just like pre-evolution. So th there's a good amount of um, Ghost Type Pokemon, and even then you could use the pre-evolutions um, instead of them uh, if you want to use Eviolite. Uh, but let's see, Dragon. Uh, you have Dragapult again, you have Dragonite, Garchomp, Hydreigon, and Kyurem, which um, I would definitely suggest you because that, um, this one of the legendaries that's not super strong. I don't know how it's in OU, but, um, it's not super strong. You have, uh, Dragazolt, Latayas, Latayos, Cat, Como, O, Salamance, Haxorus, Zygarde, 10%. Um, there's also 50%, um, if you want to use that, uh, and then 100%. Um, where, where were they? Zygarde, 10%. There's Noivin, there's Reggie Drago. Uh, Dragapult, Blygon, Gudra, Tyrantrum, Duraludon, Kingdra, Dredigigon, Guzzlord, Alteria, Appleton, Drampa, Executor, Alolan, uh, but I think you have to transfer that, Flaplin, Silvalli Dragon, which is post-game, Turtonator, Dragon, uh, and uh, yeah, those are pre-evolutions. So you've even got a ton of Dragon-type Pokemon that like, you could use, so it's just like... It's just like a ton of Pokemon. Can you stop? Good girl. Um, so there's just a ton of Dragon. That, there's just a ton of Pokemon that you can use in Sword and Shield to make different teams to want, go through the game with. Uh, one of my biggest complaints is that it, they are super easy. Like I don't remember a point in the game where I've ever really been um, challenged uh, that hard. Um, like, even in um, my Reggie Gigas only uh, playthrough of it, it was mostly smooth sailing. Um, and the plot is a lot easier to get through than Gen 7s. And I think this is the, re the main reason why I found it really hard to justify going back to Gen 7, because Everything Gen 7 does, Gen 8 essentially does better. Because while it may, while Gen 8 may not have all the available Pokemon, and 
uh, and you know, there may be, and the uh, selection of Pokemon that it doesn't have may be a reason why you might want to go back to Gen Seven. Um, but essentially, Gen Seven is better than it's just straight up better than uh, Gen Eight is just straight up better than Gen Seven because it has more Pokemon. No, stop it! Stop it! It has more um, available Pokemon. It uh, has uh, um, a more consistent difficulty level where it, well, unfortunately, it is e on the easy side of Pokemon games and I would definitely have liked it to be more difficult. It is, uh, you know, still, you know, at least you can, you know, suggest it to the people who like uh, easy games, more laid back games rather than Gen 7 where people who like more easy and laid back games may be turned off by the harder totem Pokemon and uh, Necrozma boss battle in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Um, so, de um, it's definitely, um, it's definitely more consistent with the difficulty level and it, uh, it definitely, <coughs> it's definitely one of the games that's easy to suggest to people. And it has a wider variety of Pokemon that you can use to build a wider variety of teams, um, including the DLC. And I think it's just... Yes, thank you. That's very nice for I don't need to this right now. I, I just think it's one of the... I think it's just... I just think it's the best, more casual, laid-back games to play. Pokemon games to play because... Of all those things, like um, the reason why I couldn't really suggest Gen Seven over, I could suggest going back to Gen Six over Gen Seven, is because it does have Mega Evolution, which you don't get in Gen Seven before the post game, and Gen I don't really like Gen Seven's Z moves, so uh, and I think they just drag out a battle too much, where um, you know, with the whole big long animation where uh, Mega Evolving doesn't take up as much time uh, and, uh, you know, it's just cooler, in my, better in my opinion, um, um, and uh, yeah, I've just never really been a big fan of Zemu, so I find it hard to recommend Gen 7 at all, because Gen 8 is a better, like, more casual experience um, with uh, a wider variety of Pokemon uh, and it's easy to get through the plot. Gen 6 is the same, it's easier to get through the plot, uh, it's a better more casual experience, it has Mega Evolution which is better than Z-Moves and it has um, uh, most of the Pokemon that aren't in uh, Gen 8 I think uh, that you can obtain. I don't know, I'd have to check that, but it's just like, Gen 7 is the only generation, I would say, that you don't really have a reason to go back to for the most part. Um, well then, like, a small handful of Pokemon that aren't in Sword and Shield, they can't get in, in Sword and Shield, or, um, uh, X and Y, or, so it's just like, it's just really hard to suggest that generation. Uh, especially with how much of a slog the main story is. So yeah, um... Tell me, what do you think? Do you agree with, um... Uh, how I, why I think, um, each generation has a reason... My reasoning to why we go back to each generation. And uh, do you agree... Or do you disagree? Do you think that? Do you not like this, the reasons why I would uh, go back to each generation? Do you have, or do you have ulterior, ulterior um, reasons for wanting to go back to any generations? Do you are you insane and you actually like the plot of Gen Five, uh, black and white, um, or yeah? Just tell me what what you think. And do you think that Luna? Needs to stop giving me kissy kisses and getting wanting turtles in the middle of videos. Hmm, I love you, but you be a pain in the bum sometimes. Ah.
Mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the next video or live stream or whatever I decide to do. Bye bye. Say bye bye, there you go. I'm gonna look out the window. Anyway, bye bye.